So we'll jump ahead just a little bit to uh, 1500. Um, and A1500 is a brand new item, so I'm going to give a little background for this. Uh, pass our pre-admission screening and resident review. Pre-admission pass, uh, resident review RR. Um, and this is the requirement that, you know, back with over 87, that an individual with serious mental illness, mental retardation, or related condition cannot be admitted to a nursing facility unless that has been identified and the appropriate state agencies have done an evaluation and a determination. And um, in some states, this is working well. In some states, frankly, it really isn't. And uh, CMS has been putting a lot of effort in the last few years into tuning up past our end states. We have now a technical assistance center free for state agencies. So if they tell you they don't know what they're doing, tell them there's a <laughs> go get the free help. Um, and we're also going to start a little bit more oversight. And there's an interest in PASAR, probably um, uh, the new administration actually is interested, partly because PASAR is, of all the Medicaid requirements, closest to the Olmstead, uh, to the ADA. And so it's the, it's the thing that we, we can most directly use in, um, in Olmstead issues. So I think it's not going to go away, and uh, that's why this question is here. We've never had this. There was a question in this spot before that people sometimes called the pass our question that had to do with sort of does the person have mental illness, and, but it didn't ever really say have they had a pass our evaluation. So this is a, a really simple empirical question. It, it is not asking for anybody's opinion about mental illness or mental retardation. It's asking, did the state pass our process happen, and did it show positively that there was mental illness or mental retardation for pass our purposes? Bearing in mind there could be people with real needs for mental illness that don't quite meet that state's definition. Um, so that's why we have this here. Um, And I think it bears um, a point of difficulty I've seen in a number of states is that this applies only to residents of a NIF, so only, so only in a Medicaid certified portion of a facility. You know, most of our facilities are duly certified, but the, the problem can happen where there's two distinct parts and the person's admitted to the Medicare wing, and at some point they just get rolled down the hall and go to the other, and nobody realizes, wait a minute, now pass our applies. Um, so that's a, that's a sticking point. Uh, sort of a hint as to where to find this stuff. So how do you know if, how do you know the answer to this question? Well, if right on the chart is the pass our level two determination, which is where it should be, um, but may not be in some facilities, uh, if it's there, that's, then it's obvious. Um, if it's not, Take a look at the level one. Every single person entering a Medicaid certified nursing facility is supposed to have a level one, which just is a crude screen for could they possibly need evaluation. If that says they don't need evaluation, then you know you're done and you can answer no to this question. If that said they needed a level two, but you can't find a level two, now you have a job, you know, you've got to figure that out. Um, but uh, so, and I can't go much further than that except, as we always do in Medicaid, ask your state Medicaid agency. Um, <laughs> because it's so different in each state, I can't begin to suggest what, where you go for information. Uh, so when this happens, uh, it's required for the admission only, although it's, it's possible that a person could um, for instance, with mental illness, be identified or, or develop later in an admission, and you have to come back and do a change on that. Um, the other thing I'll, I'll, I'll mention that really dovetails, it's not an MDS requirement, but it dovetails MDS and PASAR. When Congress in 1995 took out the annual, PASAR used to be PASARR, pre-admission screening and annual resident review, which was causing a lot of needless annual review and actually holding up review on some people who needed something before a year was up. Um, 
and, and the, the rule starting in 95 was that an individual must have a new resident review whenever they have a significant change in status using exactly the same language as the language we have in the resident assessment instrument. So the fact is that when a facility does a significant change in status for a person for whom this item, 15, A1500, is marked yes, um, then the facility needs to make a determination as to whether this is a resident review, a referral to the appropriate state agency for a resident review. And in the, uh, I'll come back on, I think it's Friday morning, we'll talk about, in, in this section on significant change in status, we've inserted some instructions about that. We always used to have a little instruction about hospice, we never mentioned PASAR, um, so now, now we're giving a little heads up about that. Again, this is not an MDS requirement, but we're giving the facility kind of a, uh, easy pathway uh, to meet the PASAR requirements. So uh, how, how to do this? Um, determine if they've been evaluated by level two, um, and then you have to look at whether, whether what the answer was. Not just were they evaluated, but what was the answer. And um, certainly we hope that states are evaluating everyone who needs evaluation, which means sometimes the answer will be no. Um, they, they don't, for past our purposes, have those conditions. Um, now, one of the possibilities is, well, let's go to the coding. So, no, um, person didn't need a level two, pass our doesn't even come really into it. Um, another reason to code no is if they, you know, the answer was negative on the evaluation. There are some situations, and these again are real state specific, um, uh, how states implement a, a uh, what's called a hospital exemption, a hospital discharge exemption for a 30 period of up to 30 days. So some short stay folks never get attended to by PASAR and that would be a no then. Um, or the interesting case in which it was supposed to be done but it wasn't, in which you would go ahead and enter no but then, of course, I'm going to tell you you need to get on the phone and find out who can, who can come and do that. Um, just a, a word on that. Um, because we, we haven't been doing this much, uh, we are going to start enforcing the disallowances, um, at least in some states. FFP is not available for any stay prior to a needed pass are being completed accurately and documented on the chart. So facilities should not be admitting somebody for whom they think a level two might have been needed and wasn't done. You just have to say, no, I'm waiting for the document. Um, if that document is not there, you have to say no to this question. Again, not as an MDS issue, but while I'm mentioning PASAR, um, facilities would do well not to get into this situation. And so yes is obvious. That's, that's a, um, you know, if you have that documentation and if this is not a Medicaid certified unit, you would indicate um, nine. I think that was all for this one. Yep. 